was from Bricks here. So today is the day I can finally announce the release of Bricks 1.2. And if you've been following along our recent development, you know that this version marks the beginning of a completely new layout solution, the new container element. And this one is going to replace our old section row and column layout. And yeah, we're just gonna have a quick look at the new container element in this video. This is not supposed to be an in-depth tutorial about the container. There's a complete separate video for that. And I'm just gonna show you that one quickly by heading over to our changelog. Um, so if you visit bricksbuild.io slash changelog and you scroll down, you will see our release 1.2 right here. That's a short introduction. And for the container element, I would definitely recommend you click this link here. This one will bring you to the Bricks Academy and in specific, the container element article. There's an explanation here what the container is and what it does as well. If you scroll a little bit further down, you can see the video that I just mentioned. So definitely make sure to watch that one as well. After the video, there is a guide here on how you can convert your existing Bricks data to the new container layout. So if you have been building your sites already with Bricks with a version prior to 1.2, you need to migrate your existing data. And there's a one-click migrator inside of Bricks. And this step-by-step -step guide here basically explains you how to perform this migration. So you don't need to rebuild your entire site. You just need to follow this guide. There's some screenshots down here as well. Okay, let's close this and have a look at our features. So at the very beginning, you can see here, we have quite a lot of new features. I'm not going to dive into all of them. Maybe we're just gonna have a look at the four or five biggest items here. If you wanna know more about the specific feature, you can also just click on the feature itself. Brings up this little pop-up here with a description and then also some um, community feedback here as well. So we're gonna have a look at the container element, the code element, which allows you now to execute code how we can toggle the panel, we can set any um, CSS unit now. So for example, for margins, paddings, widths, heights, all of them. The structure panel is now also separate, which is really useful, especially when working with our very flexible container element now. Um, some time savers here, we can insert new elements just via the tab and enter key. You can reload the canvas rather than having to reload the entire builder, some new dynamic data. Three new translations. So thanks everyone for providing those here. You can now um, use bricks in Persian, Arabic and traditional Chinese. Then we have a bunch of improvements down here. This one is actually, <laughs> that was not requested, but um, we thought there are some potential to improve the loading time of the builder as well. So you can see now this is almost one megabyte smaller, our builder assets here. The DOM structure as well. Lightspeed caching is now working with bricks and you can see here now there's a big list of bug fixes as well. Okay, that's change log. Make sure to check it out as well. Okay, back to our builder. I wanna show you quickly how the container structure looks like. So you can see here, I've already created a section, you could call it, and inside of it, I have three elements. And this translate to one container with those three elements. So instead of having a section, a row, a column, and then those three elements of side of them. All I need here is my container. And yeah, this should be already pretty clear now that this gives you a much smaller HTML structure, which also means your page size will be slightly smaller and this can have definitely a positive impact on your loading times and maybe also slight advantage in terms of rankings. And if we click on this container, you can see here I can edit it now. So all I've done to accomplish this layout, let's just unset all of this, was to set this to stretch. So instead of having to go to style and then layout, and then I have to set my width to 100%, which was what you had to do previously, you can just click on stretch and then it's gonna be full width. And then I just aligned the elements inside of this container centered and that's it. We can set a row gap here as well. Um, if I would align this horizontal, then we have a column layout basically. And then I can also set my column gap here by adjusting this slider. 
Okay, that's our first um, section. Let's get, go to our second one here. And you can see here, I have two columns. I just named them columns. Those are containers as well. You can just name them anything you want. I just um, decided to use the column naming convention here just to make this more descriptive, but you can just put in anything else in here. Then inside of this column, I have my heading. Also again, a line centered with those two controls here. And then I have my image gallery and here actually I don't have any settings. All right, those are my two containers. Um, Non-containers itself, we can also align. So for example, let's say, or oh, we already know that everything aligned inside this container is centered, but if you decide to have one element aligned in a different way, you can just edit this element and then you go to style layout and then you can align this element here as well, just like that. The order itself, the CSS order, you can also set for the element, not just the container, just by using this value here. Okay, you can see how this affects my layout. The structure panel itself, we now have a separate structure panel. So previously we had this little icon up here somewhere and if you clicked it, this would basically show you the structure. That was very, um, yeah, especially now with the new container element, it's much better to have a separate structure panel so you can always see your structure because now the structure really depends on you. It really depends on your need. Every section is structured in a different way using different alignment options. So having the structure always visible is very helpful. And at the same time, you can still continue editing all of your elements. If you want to hide the structure, you can just click up here to toggle it the same way now you can also hide your panel you just need to hover over the resizer and then you can see this little toggle icon so if you click it now you can toggle your panel here as well um, rather than adding your container just by clicking on it if you already have a good idea on the sort of layout that you're trying to create we also have this little tool up here which is the container layout builder so if we click here and let's say we know that we want to have a container with a column layout with three columns. So I would set this to three. Then I would set the direction to horizontal. So I have my column layout like this. And then I already know that I want to give my inner containers or my columns a padding of 15 pixel. And I can just set it like this. I click insert. And now you can see I have my container here with my three columns. You can also see this has been updated here and now reflected in our structure as well. Yeah, so that's the container element and the new structure. The toggle panel we also explored already. Let's have a look at the code element. Let me remove this here quickly. And yeah, let's just add a code element. So usually what you would do, you would just, that's also a little time saver that we just added. You would just click here maybe, well, what you can do, you can just scroll down if you know where the code element is, um, it's down here. But what I like to do now is just to uh, focus on the search just by clicking command control shift and s so now you can see i have a uh, focus here on the search and then i just press uh, no i'm not going to press anything i know i will search for the code elements so i just type in code then i press the tab key to highlight this element and then i can just press enter and just en insert my element just like that and if we click on this element, we can see that this right now is just nothing more than a code snippet. And this was the intended behavior of this element, but we have more advanced users that um, want to be able to also execute this code. So what you can do now here by um, editing this piece and yeah, you can see we have some CSS up here. We have some HTML. I can add some JavaScript um, script tags here and put in some JavaScript there. I can also um, execute PHP code now. So in order to do that, I need to first execute my code so because by default, it's just gonna show me this little snippet here. Um, so once I click here on execute, you can now see that my code has actually been rendered. And what it does, it just gives me this h1 tag, 
with this text, just some custom HTML, and then it also applies my inline style here. So I have this color crimson for this um, CSS class, which is targeting this one here. What I can also do, I can execute PHP code. So instead of um, using this HTML string, I can just say PHP, and then we can use the WordPress um, the title, and then I close this one off, and then I need to run the code. So it's not gonna be executed just by typing. Um, you can either click here in this little um, run codes icon, or you can press Command Control plus R to run your code. So you don't need to navigate with your mouse towards this little icon. Okay, so I click this one, and you can now see that it's rendering my page title which is um, this one here. So this page has a title of container and this is what I can see right here. Um, this obviously is very powerful. Um, you can now also run PHP code. So by default, this is not enabled. You need to enable this manually. If you are the site admin, you can do this. Um, let's head over to our settings. So under bricks and then settings we can open the builder access tab and then if we scroll down we now have this code execution down here and as you can see i've enabled this for all the administrators so that's what i am on this installation so i can execute code if someone would log in as an editor he or she would not see this toggle not be able to execute code okay you can also enable this for an individual user. So let's just head over to a profile here. So this is um, a user that has a role of editor. So you know by default, he's not allowed to execute code. But if we scroll down, we can allow this user to execute code. And this is really useful if you just wanna allow specific users to be able to use this functionality. And you can do this here in the same way that you can define um, the builder access itself down here for this specific user and also enable um, SVG uploads for this user. So if I would set this one and update this user next time he logs in or he refreshes um, his login, he would see this little execution code checkbox. Okay, so that's the code element. V looks very simple, but it's very powerful. So use it carefully and also only use it with code that you actually know what it's doing and safe to use. In terms of controls, we also have um, a quite new and nice addition. I want to show you that one quickly. Um, units. So by default, um, if we go to this container, for example, and then under style, you could see previously uh, margin and padding, there was only a pixel value. Now you can set any value, uh, sorry, any unit that you want. So you can see here for my margin top, let me just unlink this. Oh no, no, let's actually maybe use another element. Let's use this one here. We already have a value. So you can see here, this has a margin bottom of 30 pixel, this text element. And if I want to, for example, add a margin top of 5%, I would just set this one to percent and then to five. And now you can see that this one is using 5% at, as a margin top value. Um, you can set this to anything else. If you want to set this to um, EM, you can do it and just set it to three EM and then it's gonna use that value and that unit as a margin top value. Same thing also possible for the padding. You can see here um, for my width and for my height, I can also define uh, the units as I want to. And you could, you could use this, um, especially for margin, also to just use maybe mar for margin left, right, if you want to have some auto values, like this way, my element would be aligned to the left, or if I put margin left to order, it would be aligned here to the right hand side. Obviously, you can just achieve that by setting that value as well. But yeah, that's possible with units too. Another thing you can do with this unit feature is fluid text for example um, i'm going to show you i think i actually already used this one here in typography yeah so you can see here i have my font size i haven't set any font size but inside the unit i'm now using this clamp function and yeah so this is the minimum value i want this is my desired value here to viewport with and this is my maximum value so now i have a fluid responsive 
um, font size. So if I would resize this, um, just go to a smaller breakpoint and you watch this um, text here. You can now see how this one decreases just because my uh, the viewport of my uh, the width of my browser window decreased as well. So this adjusts um, fluidly. So that's very neat. I think that's actually everything I wanted to cover. I could make this um, much more in-depth, but I think those are the biggest new features. Like I said, head over to the changelog um, to explore everything in more detail. There's a lot of improvements speed-wise, um, a lot of bug fixes. So yeah, definitely make sure to go to your Bricks account. You can download Bricks 1.2 right now. It's available as a manual download. Once, once we receive more feedback, we will also provide this as a one-click update straight from your WordPress dashboard.